Welcome. Welcome back to the Disney World experiment. Oh my gosh, please never get. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Disney World experiment. We're going to do a little bit of more behind the experiment. We want to share with you things that we actually learned on our most recent trips, kind of give you what our mindset's like and why we call it the experiment. Well, we're going to hit Magic Kingdom today. We're going to talk about our most recent spring break Magic Kingdom day. It was peak season. And we thought we knew what peak season was. We did not know. I mean, like we, we went spring break last year. Yeah, and it was awesome. And it was busy. Yeah. It was not nearly as busy as it was, but it wasn't nearly as busy as it was in January when True. we went. So it's it's a whole other beast this year. So let's break down a couple of things about our most recent trip. First, I would say you need to have your rope drop priorities in order. Before you go into the park that day, talk about it with everybody else. What is really the most important thing for you to do that morning? Is it one of the big attractions? Do you have Genie Plus for that day? Um, and we'll get into that in a minute. But what are you wanting to hit? And what really, what tone do you want to set to your day? Do you want to accomplish things? Do you want to get in and enjoy things? For us, it's not any of the big rides. Our littles can't ride Space Mountain. Um, the Seven Dwarfs Mine train is probably never going to be their favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've never attempted to rope drop that. We just don't enjoy battling that particular crowd. Yeah. We save that energy for Hollywood Studios. Yeah. So for us, rope dropping meant hitting up Tomorrowland. We hop on buzz within the first yeah. five minutes. We hit a couple of other things. Sometimes it's Astro Orbiters. Sometimes it's People Movers. Sometimes it's... And just whatever is in there that we feel like is going to be a couple of quick, hit, quick hits. And it kind of uh, gets our adrenaline pumping yeah. for the day. Just pick a strategy. Which area are you headed to? What will your family enjoy the most? Is it one of the big rides? Is it just getting a lot of rides in there for us? It's getting a lot of quick hits in the day and we're not using our Genie Plus at that point. Yeah, well, I mean, it sums up. What's the win for you and your family? And go for that. Number two, Genie Plus during peak season. We have discovered over the last couple of times that we've used Genie Plus from, I would say January. January. Um, up until now, we've had a couple of different times to use it. It looked very different in January when we came post-Christmas season mm -hmm. to using it in March when we used it during peak spring yeah. break season. When you are using Genie Plus during spring break season, you are not going to accomplish nearly as many rides through Genie Plus as you would during a, a, a lighter season. For that day, we asked our kids, what are like the rides you really want to ride? And that was Peter Pan, first off. Peter Pan is a big one that everybody wants to ride. Everybody's booking on Genie Plus. It goes super fast. Know what you want to ride and if it's a big ride, book that one first. Um, you can book some of the lesser rides later in the day and they, the times might be closer together. Peter Pan for us wasn't available until nine something. So we still had time when we broke drop to get a few of them in. Also remember the 120 minute rule. If you've booked one um, at park opening and it hits 120 minutes and you still haven't ridden that ride, you can book another one. Once you check in for that ride, your next Genie Plus uh, opening is available. Make sure you're booking the next one. But I would say overall, expect to only ride three things using your Genie Plus during peak season. And maybe one of those is only like a main, like, a, a big, big attraction. attraction. So like Peter Pan, Haunted Mansion, like the, like when we're talking about Magic Kingdom specifically, like those big rides go quick. Super fast. So during spring break, we got to experience our very per first parade. I mean, I realize parades have only been gone for two years, but we only started going December, 2020. There were no parades. There were cavalcades. So we thought we knew, but we had, had no, no idea. idea. <laughs> So make parades a priority if your family's never experienced one. 
Um, look at the time that they are to premiere and remember when they are starting, they start all the way back in uh, Adventure Land, like right next to Splash Mountain. If you're on Main Street, it might take 30 minutes for it to actually get to you. But go ahead, grab a good spot, and make parades a priority. It's a really fun experience for your kids. It won't be wasted time. Um, and I think they do them at least twice a day. Number four. This one's my favorite one. You sure? Yeah, 100%. It was a pretty good one. Have you ever tried the Pirates Adventure? So this is a little booth, booth house hut, yep. that's right next to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Mm -hmm. Almost like you go through a little tunnel, like you're headed towards Frontierland. Yep. Near Pecos Bills, I think. Yep. So that is going to be a little booth where you pick up a map and you scan your magic band and what you've received is a treasure hunt. And what's really great about it is you're like, oh, treasure map, do you find stuff? Yep. It We're turns on interactive um, like scenarios with like the environment. So we, we stopped by a cannon and the cannon like um, took CO2 out and like, like it was really cool, like a pearl, like it's just this, like all these little elements that you use your magic band to scan. It's not just like a video screen and talks, like the actual environment kind of moves with you. It To the point where or we talk about it being a hidden gem, there was like seven families that stopped us and said, what are you doing? Yeah, like, I don't know that I don't know how many people have missed this. It's super fun to do. I know Disney has a couple of things over the parks where you have that extra interactive element. Completely free. There's multiple maps too. Yeah. So you can do this multiple times with your family. So our kids absolutely loved it. It's stuff that's like hidden. Mm -hmm. It's hidden in plain sight because it's decor for the whole yeah. area. I was just mesmerized that I didn't know that all of these things were there. So it is a mud. I like if you're trying to fill time within Magic Kingdom, just go over to Pirates. Uh, it's it's find that location. It does have weird times and hours. That's the one thing I remember. It opened. It didn't at start until something. later in the day. Yeah. So I would say, if you want to do something different, rides are just too crazy, but you want to keep moving with your family or you've done all of these things before and you just want to add a new layer to it, it's a really fun thing to do. I don't feel like our kids missed not riding something yeah. because we took an hour, a, an hour maybe. We did two of them, yeah. but I mean, maybe 30 minutes to do one of them. Yeah. Um, super fun thing to do. Pirates Adventure over in Adventureland. Lastly, park hopping. We had our very first park hopping experience this time. I don't know how we've never tried this I don't before, either. but it it came to mind this time specifically because we wanted to go over to Epcot and visit the festival, but we knew that our kids probably didn't yeah. want to spend the whole day there. So we took the opportunity to park off two different days over to Epcot. One of those was Magic Kingdom. I was torn though, because there was still so much I wanted to Did do with Magic, Magic Kingdom. Kingdom? Magic Kingdom is one of the biggest parks with the most to do, but we had very specific things we wanted to accomplish. We got those done that day. We said, you know what? Let's hop on the monorail and head over to Epcot. That was super fun. Our, this was the first trip that our kids ever got to ride the monorail. So it was a blast. we had a lot of fun. We just did dinner in Epcot. We kind of explored for a little bit, um, but we paid for park hopping throughout the week and it felt totally worth it because we didn't want to actually pay for a whole day at Epcot, but we still got to experience the pieces we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, 100%. Well, that's Magic Kingdom. Everything that we learned during our peak season, and we hope this was helpful. And the best way you can show us that that was helpful is like, yeah. subscribe, yeah. share, yeah. and comment. Like, yeah. leave a comment. Like, what do you do during peak season that makes it... Um, a little more bearable or realigns expectations for you and your family. But or do you avoid peak season like the plague? If it was up to us and we had more flexibility in our schedule, I probably wouldn't go during peak season, but that's not an option for us. So these were some of the things that we did to make it more likable. Yeah, so uh, can't wait to see you next time here on the Disney World Experiment.